I've always struggled with finding the perfect wallpaper for my phone. Yeah, there are cool options out there, but I really don't feel comfortable with any of them. Then it hit me. Why don't I just make one? So I came up with this. A cute pixelated cat. It was just what I wanted. Then I imagined the cat wallpaper for every person out there. Now I need a place to showcase them. A website. But there are so many ways to make one, like with code and with no code. There are so many no-code platforms out there and that can make it hard to choose. So I decided to make the website on three of the biggest no-code platforms. Webflow, Framer and Wix Studio, which is the sponsor of this video. Based on this blueprint I have here, I want a logo pinned on the top, a huge attractive text and a couple of floating mockups with a subtle fade on the top. On Wix Studio, first I'll create a new site. And from these two options, I'll choose to start with the blank canvas. It already has a bunch of elements in it, but I want to start from scratch. So I'll delete everything and start a new section. First thing I'll do is make the background color black and then start adding my elements. From the left sidebar, I'll add an image and replace the default image with my logo from my library. Change the sizing to 50 pixels by 50 pixels and place it right here on the top of the page. Then from the right sidebar, I'll find the position and pin it to the page. Next, I'll add the text and change the color to white. I'll upload my font, which is bricolage grotesque, and choose a large font size. Now here's the thing, I don't want to have to change all these settings every time for every text. An easier way is to find the site styles tab from the left sidebar and just update all my default typography and color settings. Next up, I need to expand the section's height so I can fit other things in it. The height has an absolute value right now, which is not good enough. So I'll turn on advanced sizing and give it a height equal to the viewport. Now let's add the other three mockup images. Making them float is as easy as pressing a button in Wix Studio. Just select one, go to the animations and effects tab and press on loop. Then choose breathe. Now I don't want all three to move together, so I can give each of them a different timing. Now, how do we make the fading effect? This is where I like to do a little coding. I'll turn on coding from this side, add a global CSS file and go to the Wix IDE, which allows you to code with VS Code and the AI Code Assistant, which might just be my favorite thing in this whole no code experience. I wanna make a mass gradient blur in CSS. Great, I'll grab the code and go back to the Wix studio. Now I'll just have to create a big container and add a class name of fade to it. And that's it. Moving on to Framer, the process is kind of similar. I can make reusable color and font assets just like before. I'll move in the elements one by one, pin the logo to the top by marking the position as fixed, make the text fill 100% of the screen width, and make sure the hero section's height matches the viewport. However, animating these mockups is not as simple here. I have to create a new loop, make the movement smeared, and manually change the offset and the transition easing. Now repeat the same process with the other images. I couldn't figure out how to do the fading overlay here, so I had to look it up. I found a component in the Framer University resources, pasted it in on my design, and adjusted a few things. Next up is Webflow. Webflow is a type of no-code platform that works with the logic of code. So if I insert my logo here, it places it on the top left and instead of dragging, I'll have to position it in the center using the right sidebar. And luckily, I have a diff centering degree, so we're good for now. The UI can be a little overwhelming, but generally you have all the layout and spacing and sizing sections here. So I'll just repeat the same placement process. And as you can see, the layering looks kind of the same on all three platforms. I also made my general styles over here, but for the font, I had to go to another tab, add my custom font over here. Then I had to reload the main page for it to load in the font list. Now, when I add my text, I can select this style in the variable list and apply it. For the animation process, I'll go to the interactions tab and add a page trigger so when the page loads we can start a new animation called breathe and transform it by moving it. This is kind of tricky here because you have to move the image a few pixels down, add a custom duration and easing, and then move it back up with a custom duration and easing. Once you're done, you have to make it a loop and repeat the same process for the rest of the images. So far so good. For the fade, I'll have to use the custom CSS part and kind of use the same code from Wix Studio to apply it. In this section, I'm showing the coolest features of this product. On Wix Studio, I'll add a new section easily by clicking on this little plus icon. Then I'll choose a preset layout, like this one. Then I'll select these two smaller cells and split them vertically. Adjust the sizing and make a little gap between the cells and give it a little padding all around. Then I'll make the background color black, add all my assets and texts inside of it. If it's necessary, make a few adjustments on the images right on Wix Studio itself. 
And believe it or not, we're done. Moving on to Framer, I'll create a grid with five columns and two rows, just the way I would make it in code. The key is to specify how many columns and rows each cell has to extend or span. For example, the first one spans over two columns and two rows. These ones span one column and one row. And these ones span two columns and one row. Now I'll move in my assets and adjust them a little bit. On Webflow, I'll create a quick stack, which is based on CSS grid. I can add different columns or rows and make each of them span one fractional unit or half of it. Then I'll have to merge these cells together to make a bigger one. Now that I have the grid, I'll move in the assets and make sure to position the images absolute and modify the Z index so the text always appears on the front because moving elements in the layers tab here doesn't actually move them to the front like the other two platforms. What's a product showcase without a cool mockup for added effect? We need an artistic black and white background photo to go with this yellow wallpaper. Instead of searching on the internet for hours, I'll just use the AI image creator on Wix Studio itself. Give it a cool prompt, save the image, select my phone mockup, open Photo Studio, and for the background, I'll choose the AI photo we just created. This cool and clean mockup is yelling for a parallax scroll effect. On Wix Studio, I can achieve this very intuitively. I'll add a new section, insert my image and make it stretch, and make the section's responsive behavior to fit to a screen. Then I'll select the image, go to the Animations tab, and from Scroll Effects, choose Parallax. That's it. On Framer, after adding a frame and an image, I'll select the image and from the Effects, I'll choose a Scroll Transform. It basically goes from minus 200 in offset to 300. Don't ask me why, I don't know why, it just looked good after testing it a bunch of times. On Webflow, I'll make a new section and put my image in it. Now we have to create a new interaction. When the element is in view, we create a scroll animation that goes from minus 400 pixels to like minus 100 pixels. Now it's time to show people this revolutionary product we've been promising them. I have a lot of choices on Wix Studio. I can go to the app market and start a little store. Or in my case, I can go to the elements tab and add a pro gallery. This is fully customizable from the animations to colors and everything else. I added a library of my images with little funny titles and descriptions and a built-in download and heart icon. Plus, it opens a dialog and asks you to see the images more clearly. On Framer, I had to create a carousel and prepare the items inside one by one, and then connect the carousel to all of them. On Webflow, I couldn't figure out how to do it. So after looking it up, I realized it's either a slider or a third-party carousel. For now, I went with the native slider and after a lot of modifications came up with this. You might not have found the wallpaper you're looking for in my store. So I added a quick form on Wix Studio, modified what inputs I want in it, changed the styling, fonts and colors, and let you contact me if you're looking for a certain design. This page is pretty cool in my opinion, but something is left out. Responsiveness. I want it to look as good on mobile and tablet devices as on the desktop. Now you might be thinking, well Jux, you should have thought about that while making the website. Yes, but Wix Studio has a responsive AI feature. All I have to do is click on this little icon and watch it prepare every section for other breakpoints. This is one of the reasons I'm going with Wix Studio for this website and my future no-code projects. I really enjoyed making the website on Wix Studio and honestly never needed a tutorial for anything. The UI being super simple and intuitive definitely helped me get used to it very fast as well. In the end, once I'm done with the design, I'll publish it and go to my website's workspace where I can monitor everything, receive payments and emails, and set up my website's information. If you want to make a website with all the necessary solutions for both business and design, you can try Wix Studio for free using the link in the description. And if you want a new cat wallpaper for your phone, you can visit my website. Well, that's all for this video. If you liked it, make sure you do your magic down there and see you on the next one.